What's going on guys, it's Gendo here, and I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of my Pentagon slash Hexagon Challenge. We are here going to take on Kariko Unido in the final match of the group stage, the zonal stage of the opening round. And before we get into that, let's take a look and see how we did in the Chile Cup. After our live com of Puerto Montt, we then took on Deportes Melipilla. Led to a 1-1 draw. We did start out scoring right away. Felipe Saavedra in the 17th minute. However, with 23 shots taken, only six of them were on target. We dominated the match in possession. I'm really saddened that our finishing let us down today and we didn't get any more goals. Mayapia, Melipia actually got on the score sheet in the 71st minute with their only shot on target to knot it up at one, stealing a point away from us. At the very end of the day, I'm going to look back at this, and this was probably the deciding factor in why we more than likely didn't advance from the Chile Cup into the second round of the Chile Cup. Our next match was against a Universidad de Chile, and as I've said before, I didn't expect to get any result from them, and it was proven here with a 4-1 loss. Our only goal coming from Piero Velasquez in the 53rd minute, but... Universidad up and down the pitch, dominated us, took several more shots as we struggled to get any sort of attacking chance going. I hope that this didn't uh, you know, affect us going forward, and clearly it didn't because we then rebounded with a 3-0 victory over Puerto Montt, Jorge Troncoso getting a brace and an own goal from Puerto Montt in the 79th minute, just adding insult to injury uh, and keeping us actually pushing us into second place at this point in time. Uh, the return leg for Universidad match, we lost 3-2, four of those goals coming in the first 11 minutes. It was 3-1 after 11 minutes, three from Universidad and one from us, Felipe Saavedra in the seventh. Eduardo Odorola then scoring in the 50th minute uh, just to try and you know start a rally. However, it proved to be one of our, one of two or three last shots on goal uh, ultimately ending up in a lost lost match so after five matches Universidad de Chile obviously top of the table they were automatically advancing San Luis were on sitting on five points we were in second place with Puerto Montt and Melipia it joint and tied for third they had four points each if we could have come up with a result against Melipia, either a win or a draw, had definitely given us implications that we could have advanced to the second round. However, I decided to get very cute and play the 4-2-3-1 formation that I used against Puerto Montt, and it completely backfired. As you can see, we lost. I can't say that's a loss. That's just a, a total annihilation. We lost 7-2. to two. Diego Borges on their side getting a hat-trick. Perez getting a brace. Andres Varela on our side just you know deciding to give them a goal for free with an own goal. You know, there was very little upside to take from this. I mean, we did you know, take a, a little bit more possession, but there was very little upside in terms of actually finishing and taking our chances. That's something I needed to address as soon as that match was over because while we were getting into their third, we weren't really taking the shots on goal that we needed. So now that we are out of the cup competition, let's focus our attention to the league play. And our very first match, I had a little fun trying to, to pronounce this name. I wanted to say Lota Schwager, but every time I it would come out, it would come out as Lota Schwager. So we took out the swagger on these people in the opening round, uh, defeating them 2-1. Inostroza getting a goal in the 49th minute, and then the deciding factor being a Loda own goal in the 74th minute. It was a keeper spillage that a defender then smacked into the back of the net. So we opened up with a great victory. We then followed that up by a completely boring 0-0 draw to Universidad de Concepcion, there are only four or five highlights in the entire match, one of them being this yellow card for Javier Perez. Not a lot of, not a lot of upside to take from this, so we move on to the next match, which was against 
bottom of the table, well, almost bottom of the table, CD Naval, and we lose to them 2-1. We definitely had more attacking chances, more possession, but once again, the finishing was letting us down. Benjamin Inostroza getting the goal in the 55th minute to not the matchup at 1-1. However, just five minutes later, Naval answers back and takes the lead and ultimately the victory 2-1. Definitely, if we're going to be facing these bottom-of-the-table teams, we need to take better chances. We need to take better shots and finish our attacking movements. We followed that up with a match against a surprisingly first-place Iberia side. Iberia was predicted by the media to come in last place this season. So to see them at the top of the table and have yet to lose and pulling away a point from them, which... By all accounts, we really stole that point. It's very nice. Uh, Benamini Estroza uh, pulling one back. We were down 2-0 at that time, so a goal, getting a goal right before halftime was great. Uh, definitely put them on the back heels starting uh, the second half. We then knotted it up with a Jefferson Castillo goal right inside the six-yard box in the 81st minute. However, Iberia answered right back three minutes later with what they thought would be the game winner. However, in injury time, two minutes into it, Gaston Palacios off a corner kick heads it right past the keeper to give us the 3-3 tie and stealing a point from the, from the league leaders. We then followed that up with Deportes La Serena, a 4-1 victory there. Just complete domination on this side. Palacios, Inostroza, and Perez with goals. It was just something that I wanted earlier on, you know, Good finishing, taking our chances, a lot of shots taken. You know, just like I said, complete domination here. So that leads us to today's match, which is the final zonal match, the final south zonal match against Carico Unido. But before we get to that, actually, let's take a look at some of the transfers that uh, had happened since I started last Livecom. So as you can see here, since last Livecom, we had brought in five people, four of them on loan, mostly just for cover. We have Jimmy Martinez uh, bringing him from Deportes Iquique, more as a, a backup midfielder than anything because I did have a couple of players go down with injury. So, But in his time, he hasn't done all that bad. He's more of a defending mid, good pace, uh, decent mentals, uh, want him to try and get his dribbling, and, well, maybe not his passing up, but at least his tackling just so he can mark better on uh, opponents. So you can try and, like I said, try and become a defensive-minded midfielder. We then had uh, Gerardo Baseas, who is an attacking mid on the left side since we didn't have a true left side attacking mid. However, as you can see in the last couple of his matches, he's kind of gone downhill. I brought him on mostly due to his speed. And as you can see, some of his speed stats are starting to take a hit, maybe due to the training that I'm bringing on. But he's uh, going to be um, you know, swinging them in from the left side. That's what I wanted them to do, to try and feed the people up front. Next was the previously mentioned Andres Varea from our affiliates in Uruguay, Rentistas. A very, a very nice defender. He's got the, he's got the great height. He can help us uh, attacking and defending corners. A speed is a, uh, something to be desired since his acceleration is agility, and his agility are below 10. However, I do like his defending, like I said, 15 with the heading, 12 marking, 12 tackling. Pretty solid uh, center defender, uh, more or less second choice at best, but great, great backup, solid super sub if it wasn't for that own goal that he put in. We then loaned in Ivan Leva from San Martin, who is uh, actually is an Argentinian side. Another left side winger, uh, and actually my first choice left side winger, since his, look at these stats, very solid technical skills, good aerial, uh, good speed, just one, one of the best left side guys that I can think of, and it's really shown with two assists in the five matches that he's played, 7.2 average. I'm going to keep playing for him for as long as possible since he seems to be the guy to take up that left side role. And then uh, finally, I brought in Ivan Pardo, who is going to be more or less used as the attacking mid than a striker. Uh, he last played for O'Higgins 
in the in uh, the Premier Division, yeah, the top division in Chile. But after five games last season, uh, O'Higgins decided to release him. We did bring him on. Uh, haven't really given him all that much uh, playing time, but he'll he'll settle into the squad, especially after he comes back from his his training day injury. You know, he twisted his knee in training. He's out three to four weeks now. So hopefully, um, when he comes back, he'll be utilized in that center mid attacking center mid role all right so let's get on with the match shall we if we can get into that match here we go we're going to be playing our 4-4-2 uh, we're starting brian aravena in gold today his first match in the league after fernando de paul getting 11 matches i want to see how this guy fares compared to fernando and see if i if he's really worth the, the backup role and actually getting some chances this season. My flat four will be Varela, Duran, Matos, and Odorola. My mid four will be Jorge Troncoso, Diego Gonzalez, Javier Perez, and Ivan Leva. And then the top two, we'll have Gaston Palacios and Benjamin Inostroza. And the papers say that Rico Unido's low confidence, poor run of form, will ultimately be their downfall. Hopefully, I can catch them on a good, on a, on a bad day, since they are sitting in eighth place right now. You know, add to add to our lead, our point total. All right, and they're missing out one of their strikers, so hopefully we can catch them. And pick up where you left off since we had a, a very nice last match. And let's see what these guys can do. All right, kick off. San Luis in their traditional yellow, Unido in the whites. As this match is just flying by, it's already 30 minutes gone. And we have a corner kick coming in. And Matus. Was he offside? No, Nicholas Matus giving us a 1-0 victory. A oh, 1-0 victory. I'm getting ahead of myself. A 1-0 lead so far after 38 minutes. And that's a, a nice long ball forward for Renito. we got to try and, and uh, take these guys down. At least close them down. Passing it really well. That's good. Oh, I thought that was in. Good job keeping it wide. And that is that was a really quick first half, I'm not going to lie. Those first 30 minutes just flew by if you saw that clock. It wasn't the worst first half because we did manage to get a goal. However, there's definitely much left to be desired. You can do a lot better. I like how you're holding up the midfield, and you guys can definitely do a lot better up front as well. So we kick off, starting the second half once again. Carico Unido starting off with the ball. And it, it's it's forms it's form like this. See, nine shots, ten shots now, two on target, and only one of them went in. We need to take more shots on goal. Like that! Inostroza, if you're not offside, thank you very much. He makes it 2-0, San Luis. That makes it also seven goals in seven matches for Eno Stroza. He is turning out to be such a wonder for our club. And how is Diaz not offside? How are they not giving him offside? And they swift reply that. Christopher Diaz for Unido. Uh, tell the boys that I need to concentrate because you really can't let that happen. You just really can't. As we try to go for... Leva crossing it in. Oh, and Palacios. Palacios off a keeper blunder makes it 3-1. San Luis. That was amazing. I just got to start making subs out now since, like I said, this thing is going by fast. And I don't even have it set to really fast settings. Um, we'll bring out uh, Matos for Javier Guzman since he's on a yellow. Uh, Anders Varela hasn't done all that well today, so Joaquin Cortez is going on for him, and that'll be all for now. And we have a throw in deep in there, attacking third, crossing in, almost. 
decent save by the keeper. With a 3-1 lead, now we need to start um, holding on. We need to start uh, closing down on these guys. So, tighten up. Actually, I probably should have saved the... Uh... Oh, maybe? Oh, bad pass. Yeah, maybe I should have switched out the uh, attacking to maybe a more control or a counter type mentality. Because I don't want these guys pushing up, and they're pushing up. Um, guys, that what are you doing? Oh, thankfully, you hit it wide, but Jesus. What are you doing? Okay, calm down. Take that off, take that off. Retain possession. What are you guys doing? In the box, uh, it's 3-2. Defense is looking really shaky now. I'm not too happy about that. Uh, we're going to bring on... I don't know if I want to bring in Velasquez or Toledo. We're going to bring on Toledo for Diego Gonzalez in the last few minutes, and hopefully they don't come up with an equalizer as Unido are, are rallying, and he shoots it wide. 88th minute. Can we get a goal or at least close this down so they don't get a goal? You know, Stroza, nice! Nice goal! Second of the game. And that's 4-2 San Luis, and that has got to be the game winner. Putting it away. Two minutes of stoppage time to go as we get another attacking chance. Could we make it five? I don't think we're going to make it five. But at the very least, a 4-2 victory at home, giving us another three points. Ina Stroh's offside. That doesn't matter at this point, as there's the whistle for full time. And San Luis take a 4-2 victory to complete the south zonal stage. Almost undefeated. I think it made us go 3-1-1. One it's a good solid win for the team. And as you can see right there, 16 shots, 7 on target. A little more efficient this time around. Good possession, cutting down on the fouls. This is how this is how football needs to be played for us. So now we sit. We jumped San Marcos. I believe, well, I was going to say, is it? We haven't played him yet. We have on goal difference, same goal difference. I don't know, but it's nice to be in second place now as we are still chasing Iberia in first. It's still early on, and it's still early on, number one. It is also still the opening stage. We still have a whole another stage to work through. So five matches, sorry, six matches out of 38 is definitely you know, early on. Can't get too hyped up about it but you know seeing in second after it not bad all right so next up let's see here what, what would be a good match uh santiago morning were predicted to be up there next time uh actually i'm gonna come back at the very end of the opening stage since that since that seems to be yeah, because when we'll go all through the opening stage and see where we place uh, going into the the last set of 19 games. And I'm trying to decide if that's really a good idea. Well, there's no more cup competition, so that would be 13 matches, three months through. Yeah, we'll do that. So next time we come back, we're going to face off against Coquimbo Unido at the very end of the opening stage of Primera B. So until that time, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. If you would like to be notified of any future videos, please go and hit the subscribe button. If you would like to leave a comment, a suggestion, whatever, do it in the comment box below. But then, until then guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.